Dieu soit loué. It is such a blessing to see you safe and sound. This belongs to you. Bless you, whoever you are. You have our eternal gratitude. <clears throat> I believe you've met Monsieur Julien Raymond from distant Saint-Domingue. He's one of the most eminent members of our organization. And you, mademoiselle? What should we call you? My name is Aegis. Ah, oh, yes. The Aegis. The mighty shield and scourge of Zeus. <sighs> I wonder... Earlier, by the Pont Neuf, when you touched Monseigneur's ring, can you explain what happened? The ring called to me. It compelled me to reach out and take it. Come now. The moment I touched it, I was transported. Somewhere else. It was the same strange world that you were in, Monseigneur. Hell, you mean? Or purgatory? I saw things there. I saw Monseigneur giving a sermon. What wickedness is this? This explains the moment when you froze. And this isn't the only time you've experienced something like this, n'est-ce pas? That is correct. It also happened with two objects I found in Place Dauphine. And what happened there? That is where I found your Bible and your cross, Monseigneur. How did you know they belonged to me? They demanded to be returned to you. You did not regain consciousness until I did so. This is madness! Let us not be so quick to judge, Monseigneur. I witnessed the moment when your cross was taken from you. Then I saw you being locked in that box. Et bien voilà. It is just as I suspected. Here, Aegis, look at this. Over the course of my research, I unearthed this ancient document. I believe I have finally uncovered its meaning. It's a triangle with an identical inscription at each corner. Nimi, memory in ancient Greek. Then in the center, there is an open eye which symbolizes awakening. Do you understand? The images you saw, Aegis, were Monseigneur de la Farre's own memories. Three echoes of the past tied to personal objects of his. Three Nimi's memories which some dark alchemy had taken from him. Without them, his mind would have remained lost, incomplete. He would never have regained consciousness. But by returning these three objects to him, Aegis, you were able to save his immortal soul. Tell me, Aegis, when you were at the clerk's office at the Châtelet, did you perhaps see a leather wallet near the abbot's documents? No, Monseigneur. Ah, that is unfortunate. The moment I touched it, I was transported somewhere else. It was the same strange world that you were in, Monseigneur. Hell, you mean? Or purgatory? I saw things there. I saw Monseigneur giving a sermon. What wickedness is this? This explains the moment when you froze. And this isn't the only time you've experienced something like this, n'est-ce pas? That is correct. It also happened with two objects I found in Place Dauphine. And what happened there? That is where I found your Bible and your cross, Monseigneur. How did you know they belonged to me? They demanded to be returned to you. You did not regain consciousness until I did so. This is madness! Let us not be so quick to judge, Monseigneur. I witnessed the moment when your cross was taken from you. Then I saw you being locked in that box. Et bien voilà. It is just as I suspected. Here, Aegis, look at this. Over the course of my research, I unearthed this ancient document. I believe I have finally uncovered its meaning. It's a triangle with an identical inscription at each corner. Nimi, memory in ancient Greek. Then in the center, there is an open eye which symbolizes awakening. Do you understand? 
The images you saw, Aegis, were Monsignor de la Far's own memories. Three echoes of the past tied to personal objects of his. Three Nimi's memories which some dark alchemy had taken from him. Without them, his mind would have remained lost, incomplete. He would never have regained consciousness. But by returning these three objects to him, Aegis, you were able to save his immortal soul. Tell me, Aegis, when you were at the clerk's office at the Chatelet, did you perhaps see a leather wallet near the abbot's documents? No, Monseigneur. Ah. That is... What task did you entrust to the abbot? The Holy Office ordered me to keep an eye on the Comte de Cagliostro. This charlatan imagines himself to be the heir of Mesmer, the magnetizer, and seems to have ingratiated himself with the king. There have been disturbing reports about him that could lead to his excommunication. It is said that he can make the dead speak. Can you imagine? I asked the abbot to investigate the surroundings of Eugène de Vaucanson's workshop, where the Count had been seen coming and going for several weeks. I cannot disclose the details of what he discovered there, but it may well be related to the events that have plunged Paris into mourning. I bid you farewell, Monseigneur. Wait just a moment, s'il vous plaît. You are one of Cagliostro's creatures, are you not? What do you mean? When were you... When did you... awaken? I do not understand, Monseigneur. Well, well, that is to say, you talk, you think, you seem to act with some sort of free will. This was not always the case, that much is clear. You must agree that not all automates are as sophisticated as yourself. I'm attempting to unravel the mystery of your true nature. Tell me, what are your very first memories? That is a question I am unable to answer. How strange. In that case, you must surely be able to tell me who taught you what you know. What I know, Monseigneur? Hmm. How can I put it in a way that you'll understand? For example, you call me Monseigneur. How do you know that this is how one addresses a member of the clergy of my rank? I cannot explain it. I believe... Go on, Aegis. I believe that this knowledge is not mine. Well, I never. Did you hear that, Abbot? I caught every word, mon ami. Monsieur Raymond.
What is the aim of this organization? We publish articles and exert our influence on those who are in a position to improve the lot of our unfortunate brethren. Our numbers grow by the day, and we have many illustrious members, such as the Comte de Mirabeau and the Marquis de Lafayette. But it was Monsieur Brissot and the Abbot that founded the group. Oh, good old Brissot. Shouldn't he be here by now? Yes, Mon Père. He should have arrived hours ago. Alas, there has been no sign of him. I hope to God that no misfortune has befallen him. What fate does the kingdom reserve for those with black skin? According to tradition, any enslaved person who sets foot on French soil is freed. This rule is most problematic in the eyes of planters in the colonies who would seek to maintain their precious labor force. This is why, for the past 12 years, no black people have been allowed to disembark in any of the kingdom's ports. Those who accompany their masters on the journey are imprisoned in the Admiralty's jails the moment they leave the ship. As for those who manage to evade the authorities, they live in fear of the raids carried out by the Marshalsea. Are you not subject to these laws, Monsieur Raymond? I am fortunate enough to have been born a subject of the King through my father, and also to have received an education, and to be wealthy. Naturally, that makes all the difference. You are quite a long way from home, Monsieur Raymond. I haven't been back to Saint-Domingue in nearly five years. I left my most trusted men in charge of overseeing my indigo plantation. I came to France with the aim of having an audience with the king. I hoped to convince him to use his automats for agricultural work. I was of the belief that this was the best way to ease the suffering of our enslaved brethren. Alas, it was all for naught. I was only able to get an audience with the Minister of the Navy, and even that was granted reluctantly. Later, when the King convened the Estates General, my hopes were renewed. I saw it as an opportunity to make our voices heard. And then, mon Dieu, what a disaster, Aegis. What a complete disaster. Monsieur de Lafayette, you are safe and sound. Safe and sound indeed, but with a broken soul. I have just returned from Place Dauphine. I understand, monsieur. The Guard National. I was too late. All these brave men cut down in a single attack. Why was I not among them? Alas, I am condemned to outlive them and to witness an even greater calamity. What disaster do you fear, monsieur? It's a highly sensitive matter. I've been waiting in vain for a message of the utmost importance. Can you tell me more about it? Ma foi, at this point, I don't really have a choice. You can speak freely. Have no fear. Before the King's attack, I sent a squad of horsemen on a very important assignment. They were to collect a precious cargo at Gros Caillou, not far from the Hotel des Invalides. What sort of cargo? I'm sorry, Aegis, but I swore on my life to keep it a secret. All I can tell you is that it would give us a decisive advantage. But I haven't heard from my men. I'm worried that the exchange may have met with misfortune. It is paramount that I learn what happened and who has the cargo now. The future of the kingdom depends on it. Since it's so important, I will go there myself and attempt to solve this mystery. Monsieur. What can I do for you, madame? How do you intend to counter the king's actions? Unfortunately, we don't have the upper hand. For now, we can only hope to protect ourselves from him. I am convinced that something is afoot. Something that could destroy all our hopes in an instant. You have my full attention. You should know that I am a gunpowder commissioner. As such, I oversee the provision of gunpowder to the kingdom's arsenals. L'Arsenal de Paris in particular. 
For the past two days, a large quantity of gunpowder from Marsanji has been sitting near Les Invalides. It's in a warehouse by the factories. But the men I sent to take possession of the cargo and transport it to the Arsenal have gone missing. Do you realize what this means? The gunpowder could have fallen into our enemy's hands. It's possible. One thing is certain. It's enough to destroy half of Paris. Whether it is still in the warehouse or has fallen into the wrong hands, we must find it urgently. Then, if possible, we must neutralize it. How? Simply by placing it in contact with water. Nothing could be easier in theory, but we must find a way to flood it. Flood the gunpowder? <laughs> You're out of your mind, Lavoisier. We're in the most desperate of situations and you want to deprive us of such a valuable resource? What will our cannons use once we have formed our army of patriots? Your army, Marquis, is presently but a figment of your imagination. I see. So you're one of those men who would sound the retreat before the battle has even begun. I will go to the warehouse. Once I have located the powder, I will decide what to do with it. Ah, you're back. Do you bring me glad tidings? The abbot is safe and sound. He is at the Société des Amis des Noirs, with Monsieur Raymond and the Bishop of Nancy. Very well. Very well. May Providence allow them to reach us safely. Though I despise war, we must rally the people for battle as soon as possible. A reliable source tells me the arsenal at Les Invalides is overflowing with weapons, but a royal automat guards it. I now have no doubt that you are capable of defeating such a creature. But are you prepared to go back into the fray? Yes, I am. Very well. Try to clear the way so we can access the Hotel des Invalides. Once you've done that, we'll take care of the rest. A handful of patriots are already there. Their task was to open a passage to the east, through the Faubourg Saint-Germain. Very well. I will go and find them. Were you present when the Estates General was dissolved? Oui, madame. I had a front row seat. I witnessed what it cost to defy the crown. We laid bare before the king the abject misery of his subjects. It was more than he could suffer. So he had the people's representatives dispersed by means of bayonets. At least we only had to contend with soldiers made of flesh and blood. Positively angelic compared to the machines that have swept through Paris. Goodbye, Monsieur de Robespierre. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Have your efforts paid off? Eh bien, Aegis, did you make sure my men managed to collect the cargo? No. I haven't gone there yet. Et alors? What are you waiting for? The exchange was to take place near the Église du Croquet. reaching Les Invalides by the moat. I shall have to go round it through the Faubourg Saint-Germain. According to Monsieur de Robespierre, his men have cleared a path for me. Madame de Polignac. It's dreadful ages. All is lost. How were you able to leave Saint Cloud? Earlier, after you ventured out into the palace grounds, all of the machines that were guarding us set out after you. I seized the opportunity to go to the stables and jump into a horseless carriage. What are you doing here, Madame? The children, Aegis. Charlotte and the Dauphin. The Queen and the Marquis de Lafayette did everything they could do to save them from the King's madness. They spent days working out every detail of this operation with the greatest secrecy. 
the preparations for departure with our accomplices in the Queen's house. The children's escape, hidden inside this wagon. Our meeting here, in this very place. Then our departure with the riders who were to ensure our safe passage all the way to Austria. They would have been safe there with their uncle, the Emperor. But you can see for yourself. The children are nowhere to be seen. Oh, Monsieur Clery. He... he was the Dauphin's valet. The poor soul gave his life to protect the little ones. Horses for three men. Someone is missing. The rooster embroidered on it. A list of staging posts between Paris and Liège. Madame. The attackers all bear the same red cap with an embroidered rooster. It's the symbol worn by those who support the Duc d'Orléans. One of them had a map indicating all the staging posts from here to the Principality of Liège. Liège? That rabble-ridden city is where the Duke and his miscreants have established their base. Over here, there are four dead horses, and the body of a third man wearing a red cap. Four horses for three men. That means one assailant managed to get away. It's beyond doubt. The Duke's men have taken the children. They're the ones behind this ambush, and they knew every detail of our plans. We were betrayed. But surely the ambush did not go exactly as planned. Three of them lost their lives. That's true. If only we could catch the one who was able to escape. But now that I think about it, the riders that the Marquis de Lafayette promised us, if they made it here, they may have been able to surprise the kidnappers and stop them from carrying out their misdeed. By the grace of God, they may already be on their way to Vienna with the children. I shall get to the bottom of this. Which garrison is this squad from? They are stationed at the Hotel des Invalides. The riders must have left from there. Very well. I will try to retrace their steps. As for you, please return to the Queen at once. You have taken enough risks as it is. Find the children, Aegis. Je vous en supplie.
pursued a Robespierre's men. They perished in the line of duty. No, no, Prosepa, the grass. I, 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 I don't want to die. Not like this. Oh, if I had known, I would have set fire to that monster factory long ago. Tree? Volcanson's demonic forges. The Gehenna where you were smelted, just like all the murderers of your kind. Monsieur, I have no intention of harming you. I have come to put an end to the King's actions. If you're telling the truth, then go away, and let me live! Put down your weapons, please. I beg you to spare these poor people. These poor people? But the streets are empty. There is not a soul there who is still alive. There are still those who resist. Some good people came here earlier and asked me for a drink. They swore they would liberate the Hotel des Invalides. They looked exhausted, but utterly determined to fight to their very last breath. Mats, have you observed their movements? A convoy led by those machines went by here. Countless wagons loaded with barrels. They came from the north, most likely from the factories. I think something terrible is going to happen. What do you fear will happen? I don't know, but I have a terrible feeling. Laissez-moi à présent. You'll draw those creatures to us. For l'amour de Dieu, run and hide! What do you mean, Papa? Hurry, I beg you! The Count is at our door! He shall take us away! Good heavens! Don't worry about me! Run, I say! Run! Where could she have escaped to? I should keep looking. Hiding place in the Luxembourg Gardens. If I could find out where it was, I could track down Atanias.
They're after us. You must carry on, I beg you. I will make it. I'm out of breath. Oh, I'm more dead, Gia. Suzanne, just a bit more. We're almost there.
Dear Suzanne, take my hand, please. Don't let them take me away. No. Oh, no, this, this has to stop. I don't want to be tormented anymore. That is not my intention. I have come to rescue you. Rescue me? But what on earth are you? It is of no importance. What did you see and hear before you regained consciousness? I had frightful visions, rageful wraiths filled with pain and sorrow. And it was cold enough to curdle the blood. It's impossible to describe all the rage and anger. I was in another body, I think. So big, so powerful. And there was this commanding voice ordering me to spread terror and death. Did I really hear it? Or did I momentarily lose my mind? Who are you, monsieur? Don't you know? I'm Jacques Necker, Ministre des Finances. Well, I was before I was captured. But this situation suggests that the king has decided to dismiss me from his service. What does he accuse you of? My alleged connivance with the Third Estate, no doubt. And most of all, for having been the first to ask to convene the Estates General. How and when were you captured? When the machines attacked, my wife and I fled our home to hide not far from there in the Église Sainte-Marie. But we didn't stand a chance against the machines. They overran the nave, wantonly mowing down the faithful. My wife, my poor wife, she wasn't able to escape. I'm sadly convinced of this. As for me, my life was spared only so I could be tormented. What is the meaning of all this? What will you do now? There is no future for me in this kingdom. I need to find a safe place where I can prepare for my departure as soon as possible. I will take you to the Cordelier Convent. You will be safe there. A la bonne heure, she's back. Aegis, what a joy and relief to see you again. Monsieur. Welcome to our stronghold. I'm sure that everyone here is aware of the great debt we all owe you. As you can see, the most exhausted among us are growing stronger. While the most determined are already planning our counterattack. I did not expect to see you all together. Four days ago, the representatives of the Third Estate gathered in a tennis court. They swore not to separate until they had established a constitution for the nation. But that was not the only oath we swore. All the honorable men who were at Versailles, representatives and patriots, members of the Club Breton, secretly swore to meet here if they were dispersed. You, Aegis, have allowed them to gather once again. Though unfortunately many are missing, we still have hope. Why did you choose to meet in this convent? It was my idea. Voyez-vous, I stay here whenever my obligations bring me to Paris. No other retreat inspires such peace and contemplation. Et puis, truth be told, this building has always felt like a fortress to me. Just look at how thick these walls are. For two whole days, the Patriots in the quarter consolidated the outer walls to make it an impenetrable citadel. No automat has broken through our defenses yet. Where are the monks, mon père? They are secluded in their quarters, praying for the salvation of the people of Paris. However, we bear no illusions. We are weak, we are divided, and we are unarmed. Without you, without your warrior strength, we have no chance of turning things around. You are sent by heaven above, Aegis. From now on, you may consider the Cordelia Convent your headquarters and a welcome refuge. We must speak, you and I, in private, if you please. Monsieur de Lafayette must not hear a word of what I'm about to tell you. What do you mean? 
You all seem to be certain that I will use my strengths to serve your cause. Are you forgetting that I have a task to accomplish? Not at all, madame. We all know and support your plan to free Monsieur de Vaucanson. That is why I've taken the time to think of a way for you to get to the Bastille. I am listening. There is a patriot in Paris whose pamphlets have aroused Monsieur de Lafayette's ire. His anger is so strong that the poor man had to disappear to escape arrest. I know that he is secretly hiding in the quarries in Montmartre. A labyrinth he is said to know like the back of his hand. If anyone can help you navigate the obstacles that keep you from the Bastille, it is the elusive Monsieur Marat. Very well. I will go and find him. Monsieur Necker. I owe you my life, madame. So I am embarrassed to ask you for anything more. Do not fear. You have my full attention. Suzanne, my beloved wife. I cannot bring myself to accept her death. Despite all the evidence, I still hope to see her alive again. I need to be sure. Mon Dieu. What have I done to deserve such a fate? Why is the king sworn to destroy me? And all that I hold dear. After everything I've done for him. My abnegation. I will look into what happened to your wife. Bless you, madame. Where should I start my investigation? In the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of Les Invalides. We were separated in the Église Sainte-Marie, on Rue de Bourgogne. Why would the king owe you anything? I dedicated my life to the kingdom as his minister. On my life and my fortune as well. I refused to accept any remuneration for my services in order to keep the accounts balanced. And I personally filled the king's coffers with two and a half million livres from my own private accounts. Bonds in the Caisse des Comptes, which the king keeps in a tailor-made armoire de fer in the Palais des Tuileries. He stores all his secrets there. I'd wager there's enough in there to sully his reputation a hundred times over. You must retrieve these bonds post-haste, madame. They must not be used to allow this madman to build more murderous automats. Do I have any chance of opening it? Don't even think about it, madame. Despite your incredible strength, that safe is said to be impenetrable. It was designed precisely to that effect. I personally never had access to it. I suppose that its contents were too unofficial for the honest minister that I always was. Who has the key? The king does, that's for sure. Anyone else? How could I know? His shadow advisors, most likely. Now that I think about it, there's a rumor that has been going round Versailles for a while now. It's said that Monsieur de Mirabeau used to come and go as he pleased at the Tuileries. That he oversaw diplomatic missions for the Crown. Not in any official capacity, of course. Who knows? He might know more about this matter than I do. I will ask him. I shall be off. You are the only hope of seeing my beloved wife again, and of foiling the plans of the clockwork tyrant. Monsieur Raymond. Aegis, we are very pleased to see you again. It was very unwise of us to leave the Societe without such a capable bodyguard as yourself. It is a miracle that we got here safely. What do you want to talk to me about? Have you ever heard of the Club de Massiac, Aegis? No, Monsieur. It's an association that meets at the Hotel de Massiac, just west of Le Halle. It counts some of the wealthiest plantation owners in the Empire. Those from Saint-Domingue and the Petite Santé are most formidable adversaries. They are waging a war of influence to keep the slave trade going and resort to the vilest methods to achieve their ends. They worship nothing but money. And their greed is matched only by their cruelty. Regrettably, my interests occasionally require me to suffer their company. Two months ago, I was in La Havre to settle some business with the Admiralty when I overheard a conversation between two planters from Bastère 
If they are to be believed, the Club de Massiac is plotting to create sleepless slaves. This is Clave Sans Sommeil. Those were their exact words. It's hard to say what this could possibly mean, but I fear they plan to administer some foul drug to their slaves to force them to toil day and night without rest. Our organization will not let these poor souls endure such a hell. Aegis, we must look into this. It is a matter of great urgency. You speak of greed, Monsieur Raymond. But could you enlighten us as to what makes you any different from the planters you condemn? What exactly do you accuse me of, Monsieur de Robespierre? S'il vous plaît, do tell. Do you not also exploit the labor of these poor souls yourself on your indigo plantation? I fight every minute of every day to improve their condition. No one would have the audacity to deny this. If that's the case, then why wait? Free them. You preach abolition, yet you continue to line your pockets at their expense. The truth is, you refuse to upend the established colonial order because your entire fortune depends on it. It's easy to criticize from atop Mount Olympus, Maximilian. You know nothing of the realities of Saint-Domingue. What would happen to all these people if I freed them tomorrow? Without an education? Without a livelihood? I would be condemning them to the most abject misery. No. I must act with both compassion and realism. Any reform, revolutionary or not, must be taken step by step, with moderation and prudence. This reform is not so difficult. I've begun it myself, at La Belle Gabrielle, my plantation in Guyane. There you will not find slaves, but workers who earn a weekly wage. And my plantation is no less profitable. Ah, yes, profit. Because that's the most important thing. Don't you see, the law of nature gives every man the right to cultivate his own land. Monsieur, calm yourselves. I implore you. Now is no time to quarrel. <laughs>